Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we will review uh, testing Ubiquiti's a five-port edge router, and we're going to use NetScout's OptiView XG's throughput test. It's kind of important because I'm going to do another one with the performance test. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the test goals are, are quite uh, straightforward. I was asked by a client to test Ubiquiti's 5-port edge router. That's the model I'm using. I'll put the link in the uh, description, so if you want to check it out, you can check it out as well, for various sites. So one site has a 100 meg link, and the other one has less than 10 meg. The concern was they were wondering what kind of throughput they can expect, and because it's a little 5-port, it's a fairly inexpensive router, so we are wondering what kind of throughput it really gives. We all understand just because the ports are 1 gig doesn't mean you're going to get 1 gig. Of course, it's dependent upon configuration and a bunch of other stuff. We found some information on the web. People used iPerf and some other technical write-ups where packets were blasted through the unit. It uh, wasn't clear how they tested. And in some cases, they use really, really tiny packets. And in other cases, they use very, very large packets. I'm going to talk about why that matters in just another slide or two. So we're going to test for ourselves. I want to use my own packet sizes and I need to document if there was any noticeable performance difference between routing and NATing configurations. So network address translation is what NATing stands for. So first thing you do is with your tools, whatever tool you happen to use, even if it's two laptops, you always need to do a baseline. So just connect them up with a wire. In this case, that's what I did with the OptiViews, just back to back. Uh, give them a static IP if you need to. Some of them will automatically get an IP. In this case, I gave them a static IP. And just do two quick tests. One with each cable that you want to use with the OptiViews or whatever test tool you want to use. The reason why I say that is sometimes you grab a cable, it's not quite going to support gig speeds or it doesn't have all the pins or the cables, that kind of stuff. And this is a great way to vet that out fairly quickly. So now we go to the configuration screen, and this is the XG configuration screen, and we're concentrating on this little area over here. Uh, the speed is irrelevant. It says 1.5 meg. That doesn't matter right now. And this is the key part right here where it says sweep. Whatever tool you decide to use, please make sure you can use a sweep option. All that means is that I'm going to use the test with different packet sizes. Some of them let you choose the sizes, some of them it just pre-coded, it doesn't matter. Just as long as it lets you use different sizes and somewhere it tells you what those sizes were. Uh, and down here on the bottom it says two seconds. The reason why this is important is I want to show you in the next screen, I want to baseline how it actually works. In this case, the OptiView will actually run seven tests, one for each packet size, and the packet sizes are outlined here, 64 through 1518. And you'll see that there's a little uh, status bar at the bottom and it says test six of seven in this example and so on and so on and so on. I also did a quick capture and I wanted to find out what protocols it was using. In this case, it's UDP and it's port 3842. In some places it actually says that, but the point is you just want to see if it always uses that port number. In this case, it does. And you can see the first bunch of packets were 64 bytes, then 128, 256, so on and so on. And that is the entire packet size, not the payload, right? You see the payload here on the side, it's slightly smaller, of course. And that's why I wanted to see that. The next thing I did was I took the stuff, the trace file, and I threw it into Wireshark and I did a quick graph trying to see um, how the test behaved. And it's important to understand because of this previous screen here, every packet I send needs to come back. That means if I generate one and a half meg one way, I'm going to get one and a half meg back. So it's three meg total. That's how this tool works. So if you don't know how your tool works, please find out. Some of the packet blast tool are just tools, pardon me, just blast a bunch of packets and count them at the other end. They don't need to be acknowledged or anything. That's kind of a big deal. I want the traffic to go back and forth through the router uh, or the NATing software. Okay, And you can see the uh, lines aren't quite 1.5 1 1 meg and the reason why they're not is because the OptiView clock and the actual real clock are going to be slightly different because that's what I use to graph in Wireshark. So it's close enough though, right? You can see what it's doing. Now, at the end of my test, you can see that 100% of the packets went through. And in this case, it gives me upstream and downstream, or upload and download, or transmit, receive, however you want to say that. So it's 100% both ways. And again, you want to do that with the units or your laptops and the cables that you want to use first. That's before you plug it into anything. 
So the next test is we're going to actually plug it into, this is the way that Ubiquiti router works. There's five ports here, as you can see, uh, numbered 0 through 4. And I'm going to take port 2 and 3. And basically all I did was configure two IPs for those ports. That's all I did. Same with the corresponding XGs. And of course, I gave them the default gateway of their local port. Now, when I went back to the configuration screen, I wanted to make sure that I just changed one simple thing, and that is the speed. Now I want a gig. So gig, and I want a sweep. I want it to go ahead through those range of packet sizes between the two units. So everybody always wants to see the results. So I, I just put two tests here. I actually did five, right? And I dropped two, the high and the low, and I averaged three. And these are two of those three. And as you can see, it's pretty close. Uh, the, 1024 packet size was 180 and 180 and down here on the second test it was 179 and 179 so they were pretty close and same with the 1280 226 226 229 229 so they were pretty 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 close now why why do I care about these sizes well the reason why I care is you can see here at 64 byte packets it really starts to suffer it's a lot of work and you can see we only got 15 meg through it I know on this network the average packet size is between 1,000 and 1,200 bytes. So that's why I'm using this range of values. So if you don't know what it is at your place, please use some kind of network management system, some kind of monitoring system, packet captures, and try to figure that out so you know where you fit. Very rarely will your network be 64, and very rarely will it be 1518. It'll be somewhere in the middle. Now we go to the router and we turn on NAT. Right? And this is the way the screen looks on that actual Ubiquiti unit. And I didn't do anything fancy. I just said NATA port. That's all. All protocols. And off we went to the races. So our test results are going to be 169 at 1024 and 212 at 1280. So it went down a bit. Right? We can just, based on what we ba very vaguely remember from two screens ago, that's going to be the difference. Now, if you want to compare the results, here we go. We have 180 and 168. So there is a very nominal difference. Now if we tried to rewind and remember what I said at the beginning, the requirements were the customer had a 100 megabit link. So even with NATing enabled with an average speed of 168 megabits per second up and down, this will serve quite nicely. And there you go. Hope that helps. Have a good day.